The British assumed that their many Loyalist friends would join them as they marched north from Charlestown in their quest to reclaim the southern colonies. The strategy was to mount a three-pronged attack to the east, center, and west. General Cornwallis, British commander, occupied Charlotte in September 1780. The western flank was led by Major Patrick Ferguson, a Scottish officer who was training Loyalists in traditional British military techniques, especially the use of the bayonet. Patrick Ferguson earned the nickname Bulldog in his military career. At the Battle of Brandywine in the north, he lost the use of his right arm. Ferguson used a whistle to drill his troops and traveled with two female camp followers. At this point in the war, militia from various colonies often banded together to respond to regional threats. Sometimes, help for the Carolina partisans came from over the mountain, the western frontier. The Overmountain men were folks that had settled west of the Appalachian Mountains with their families. These are Scots, Irish, Welsh, German, English and French guys that take their families west on the very edge of civilization uh, for the chance to own their own land and live where the government is not telling them what to do. The Overmountain men hated the British and were in direct violation of the proclamation that Western territories and the colonies be reserved for Native Americans. Patrick Ferguson sent the Overmountain men a bold warning. If you did not desist in your opposition to the British, I shall march this army over the mountains, hang your leaders, and lay waste your country with fire and sword. Ferguson believed what he said. Any British officer thought well, any typical British soldier could whip 10 to 1 Americans. And when Ferguson said that he was going to march over and lay their land to waste, I think that he believed that he could do it easily. Most of the people that lived on the other side of that mountain were Scotch, Scotch-Irish. And uh, they wouldn't, you know, they didn't take threats too lightly. And it was kind of, uh, always been kind of strange to me because Ferguson was a Scotsman too. And he should have known better than to send a threat like that. The Overmountain men mustered at Sycamore Shoals, Tennessee, led by Isaac Shelby, John Sevier, William Campbell, and others. They commenced the Overmountain trek to deal with Major Ferguson. It was all militia on the Patriot side. You have the over mountain men, uh, your western settlers, but then you also have a good amount of folks from the Piedmont of North Carolina, the upstate of South Carolina as well, some Georgians. Um, so you've got a lot of folks coming together uh, to put down this threat to their homes and families. Run! Ferguson's army consisted of 120 well-trained British provincial soldiers formed from northern volunteer units, along with about 800 loyalist militiamen recruited from the Carolinas. In the west, Ferguson had isolated himself from the main British army. He established an elevated position at Kings Mountain, a rocky wooded hill on the border of North and South Carolina. On October 7, 1780, a thousand patriots surrounded him. Here they are, my brave boys. Shout like hell and fight like devils. Colonel William Campbell. The American strategy was basically to surround the hill and push up to the Loyalists on top. The Americans had rifles and they were firing uphill. Any number of them said it was like a turkey shoot. They were behind trees and rocks, but the British were in the open. But the, these frontiersmen, they had fought the Cherokee a long time, and one thing they learned, you know, you, you don't stand out in the open and fight. You hit, you run, you, you know, you hide. And one of the main things that helped them win this little battle so quickly was the long rifles they carried because the British were armed with muskets. These men had rifles, and they were making shots, you know, 200, 250, 300 yards. You know, a lot slower to load a rifle, but they were deadly accurate with it because they lived by the gun. We attempted to climb the hill, but were fiercely charged upon and forced to fall back to our first position. We tried a second time, but met with the same fate. 
The fight then seemed to become more furious. The leader, Ferguson, came into full view, within rifle shot as if it to encourage his men, who by this time were falling very fast. He soon disappeared. We took the hill a third time, the enemy gave way. The battle turned into a rout for the Patriots. Ferguson, we don't know to this day if he was trying to escape or if he was rallying his men, but he ran into John Sevier and the boys from the Nolichucky and Watauga settlement on this side. And a uh, old man, 62 year old Robert Young, named his rifle Sweet Lips, and he's the one that took him out of the saddle. A hail of Patriot bullets hit Ferguson at the same time, and he died of multiple gunshot wounds. At Kings Mountain, the battle was won for the hearts and minds of the backcountry. The tide had turned. Reports of this Patriot victory made national headlines. Kings Mountain has a major impact, and it's basically the first domino in a string of dominoes that ends up at Yorktown just a year later. The following month, Tarleton's British Legion suffered a defeat by General Thomas Sumter at the Battle of Blackstock. The empire was unraveling. The Patriots had proven they could beat the British and their loyalist friends. No one in their right mind would want to join a Tory militia unit in South Carolina now. Kings Mountain was the first link in the chain of evils that followed in regular succession until they ended in the loss of America. 